Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to talk about thesaurus, efficient cache compression via dynamic clustering. My name is Amin and this work is done in the University of British Columbia. In summary, we will see how to improve cache compression effectiveness by avoiding the redundancy across cache lines. The observation that we have is there are clusters of cache lines in working set that are similar to each other but not identical and no prior work is taking advantage of this inefficiency. The problem that we are solving is how to use this to compress the cache. The key idea here is to group nearly identical cache line via hardware level dynamic cluster mechanism and store each cluster as one clusteroid and smaller diffs. Our evaluation shows that we achieve 2.25 times average compression and up to 9.9 times, which is significantly higher than prior proposals. First, look at one existing compression method and, uh, and see where it comes up short. Consider the cache line A, which is going to be inserted into the cache. As we can see, the data values within this cache line are similar to each other. Therefore, the cache line A can be compressed as a base value combined with smaller uh, uh, deltas which is shown as a compressed A in this example. Therefore, we will insert the compressed A uh, data instead of the uncompressed version of it. As we see, this state-of-the-art last level cache compression is doing the uh, delta compression within each cache line. Let's look at another example. This time, the cache line B does not have the values that are similar to each other. Therefore, this scheme cannot compress it. Therefore, we are going to insert it uh, in uncompressed format. So same procedure will apply to other data line upon insertion, which will result in storage saving on average. Now, uh, let's imagine a cache line E. So in this case, similar to the cache line B, because the, uh, the data values are not similar to each other, we are going to insert this cache line uh, <clears throat> in uncompressed format. But if we take another look, we can notice that the cache line E and B is only different in one byte, and the rest of the data, which is highlighted in green, are exactly identical. So this redundancy across cache lines shows a missed compression opportunity. So the goal here is to enable delta compression across cache line. Using the same example of cache line E, the goal is to detect that a nearly identical copy of this uh, data line exists in the cache, and then encode this data line as a metadata and the deferring part and store that into the cache. The key challenge here is how to search for that nearly identical data line. One might say we can search entire cache line by line for the identical, uh, nearly identical copy, but this is impractical due to uh, the energy and latency costs. So in Thesaurus, we will show you how to search for the similar data line, how to encode similar cache line to compress the cache, and finally, how to do all of this cheaply in hardware. The plan is to avoid storing the identical cache line. In this example, the cache line B and A is on the identical. So we will just put a reference to a previously stored copy. And in the case of nearly identical cache line, in this example, the cache line C, we are only going to store deltas with an encoding. The encoding in Thesaurus consists of two parts. The first is the beat map, which indicates which part of this incoming block is different from the previous similar stored copy. And the second part is the sequence of bytes that are actually different. Therefore, doing so, we can uh, uh, store the cache line C in the compressed format. Now, the question that naturally rises here is whether we have enough similar data lines in the cache that we can use to achieve good compression. And if so, how do we quickly detect this in the cache? And finally, can we run a static analysis and use that, or do we need an online and runtime mechanism? In order to see if we have enough data line, we run the following experiment. Here, let's consider an ideal cache compression mechanism that instantly searches the whole LLC and tries to avoid storing the identical copy into the cache. Doing so, we can see that the, uh, the effective LLC capacity is increased by 1.3 times 
only over the baseline. Now, in order to measure how much opportunity is lost here, we are going to relax this exact match criteria. Again, consider an ideal uh, uh, cache compression mechanism that searches the entire cache instantly, but this time it searches for the similar data line and only store uh, 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 the bytes that differ from the most similar uh, data line that exists in the cache. We can see this time that the LLC capacity is increased by 2.5 times, which is significantly higher than when we only avoid storing the identical copies. So, as we can see, enabling this near match brings us a big compression opportunity. Now that we see this opportunity, we ask the following question from ourselves. Can we look at this problem as a clustering problem? To evaluate this, we applied DDE scan clustering algorithm that sees entire last level cache dump at once rather than each block separately at insertion time. And as we can see from the figure on the top, the clusters are formed with different number of clusters for different workloads. Also on the bottom, we see that uh, the, we see the number of members for each cluster. And as we can see, it varies from uh, 10 to even more than 1200 in different workloads. Although this experiment validates that clustering is effective in capturing and grouping the similar data lines, there are challenges in directly applying clustering to the cache compression. Firstly, because as we saw the number of cluster and the cluster members different uh, varies a lot among different workloads. This means that we need an adaptive cluster creation mechanism. Secondly, the cache content can change upon insertion and eviction of the data lines which also means that this clustering must happen uh, dynamically at runtime. And finally, the need to incorporate clustering in a cache controller requires that it is both relatively quick and inexpensive to implement in hardware. These requirements exclude the common clustering algorithms such as k-means, db-scan, and so on. So in summary, we showed a need for in hardware dynamic and adaptive clustering mechanism that never searches uh, the cache for, uh, to detect the similar data line. Now let's see how we can detect this identical and similar data line in hardware in the cache. Identical data line can be detected by hashing the cache, uh, the cache line contents. In fact, a prior work has done exactly this to compress the data and avoid storing the redundant uh, identical copies. Very quickly, when two data lines C and D are identical, the hashes calculated for them are also going to be equal. Therefore, a, dedu a deduplication can be detected uh, fast, and we are going to avoid storing this redundant copy in the cache. <coughs> now let's see if we can use uh, hashing the, uh, the line content in order to uh, detect a near identical cache line. This time, assuming a, assuming a cache line C and E, which are similar to each other, but because they are not identical, the hashes produced for them are going to not to be equal as well. <clears throat> this is due to the fact that this way of hashing tries to minimize the chance of collision for non-identical cache line. So this way of hashing is uh, not going to help us to detect the similar cache line as well. To overcome these challenges, the Soros uses a dynamic clustering mechanism based on locality sensitive hashing, which almost always produces same hash for the similar data blocks and different hash for dissimilar data blocks. First, let's try to get some intuition on how locality sensitive hashing works, and then later we will see how to use this for clustering purposes. The easiest the easiest way to create such hashing is to subsample data by randomly choosing some uh, bit position in the data. In this example, the cache line A and B are similar and cache line C is different from them. We start subsampling the data and as we can see, in order to create a hash which is representative enough and is able to distinguish between the data line C and data line AB, we need to keep sampling and increase the number of bits. Therefore, as we see, in order to achieve a good accuracy with these hashes, we will end up uh, having big hashes, which is not efficient in hardware. To do this more efficiently, 
locality sensitive hashes are usually constructed via a random projection. In this method, a hash vector is computed by multiplying the data line by a matrix randomly sampled from a normal distribution. Later, the elements of this hash vector are going to be concatenated to form the final hash fingerprint. Applying the random projection in this manner will preserve the distance between any two lines to within some small errors. Computing LSH hash via random projection gives us a better quality hashes, but the key disadvantages here is that, first of all, we need lots of storage to, uh, to store the projection matrix element with, with full precision. And also, we need many expensive multiplication to happen to calculate this LSH. And finally, we also will end up with the big hashes after concatenating the elements of the hash vector. Now, let's look at how the hardware-efficient LSH implementation is done in Thesaurus. Thesaurus combines two refinements of the random projection. The first refinement is that we are going to replace the elements of the projection matrix with negative 1, 0, and 1 chosen at random to reflect the normal distribution which not only will help us to reduce the storage requirement to store this projection matrix, but also will totally eliminate the need for multiplication. The second refinement is that we are going to replace the elements in the hash vector by one or zero for positive or negative values, which we can estimate the cosine distance and therefore we can use a distance metrics such as Hamming. The second refinement also helps us to reduce the resulting LSH from being uh, many bytes to, to being a small number of bits only. So the source can cheaply compute the LSH and will produce small hashes. With no multiplication and small hashes, we only need a simple tree adder and a comparator to compute an LSH bit, which is efficiently implementable in hardware. Now, hopefully it's clear how Thesaurus computes the LSH hashes. Thesaurus uses the locality sensitive hashing as a cluster mechanism where all the catch line with the same hash are assigned to the same cluster. In this example, the first three catch line are, uh, are having the same LSH and the later two are also having the same LSH. Therefore, we are going to assign the first three lines to the same cluster and the later two lines to another cluster. Now that we see how the clustering is done, we need, to, we need to know where do we store the clusteroids or the bases. One choice that we have is to store the base in the data array with the, with the compressed data. For example here, the cache line B is the base for that, cluster, for that cluster, and the cache line C is referring to that. But let's see what happens if the cache line B gets evicted. This time, because we do not have the base stored for this cluster, it is impossible to reconstruct the cache line C when we need to read it. That's why Thesaurus stores clusteroid for each possible LSH fingerprint in the main memory, and then caches the most recently used one inside a, a small LLC side structure, which we, we refer to as a base array. Therefore, even if the similar data lines get evicted from the cache, we are still able to reconstruct the, the compressed data lines on, on, on those uh, clusters. Now let's look at the storage structures of the Thesaurus. As it's typical in prior compressed caches, we have decoupled data array and tag array, which enables storing larger number of tags as compared to data entries. Also, we introduce a new LSH field which is added to the tag entry, and it is going to point to the base for this LSH in the base array. Let's look at an insertion example. First, as in, as in conventional caches, we are going to use address to index the tag and insert the tag in tag array. Later, we are going to compute the LSH for the incoming data line and look up the base array to see if we store a base for that. With no base with the, uh, uh, with the same LSH in the base array, we are going to store this cache line as the base for this cluster, and then store this cache line in the data array and uh, store the LSH in the tag. 
similar thing will happen to the cache line B. First, we're going to insert the tag, compute the LSH for that. Again, we find no base for this LSH. So we are going to insert this data line as the base for the new cluster and store the cache, uh, store this data in the cache. Now let's look at an example of insertion of similar data line uh, to the B, cache line C. This time, again, we are going to insert the tag and compute the LSH for that. But uh, this lookup to the base array this time is going to result in a hit, which means that we do have a base stored in the base array for this uh, cluster. So uh, we are going to XOR the base with this incoming data line and find the non-zero bytes. And then we are going to pack it as we saw with a bit mask. Uh, bitmap and the deltas. Therefore, we are going to store the cache line C in the compressed format. For more details on how Thesaurus avoids fragmentation of an insertion and eviction, and the placement policy of these structures, please refer to the paper. Now let's look at how a read operation for this compressed uh, data line is done. First, we are going to locate where the tag is stored, and this time the tag not only refers a point to the data entry in the data array, but because we store uh, LSH fingerprint with the tag, it can also uh, 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 locate where the base is stored in the base array. Therefore, it's only enough that we combine the space with the relevant bytes of the compressed C format to reconstruct the cache line C. Now let's look at some results that we got. We evaluate Tesaurus on Spec CPU 2017 benchmark suite. Also, compressed caches are sized to occupy the same silicon area as uncompressed one megabyte baseline. We show the improvement over the uncompressed baseline, state-of-the-art compression methods, ideal clustering mechanism which searches the entire cache in one cycle, and an uncompressed cache, uh, uh, uncompressed baseline cache with twice the capacity. The figure on the left hand side shows the effective cache foot footprint reduction. And as we can see, the service is reducing the working set size by 2.25 times on average, which is significantly higher than prior cache compression proposals. Also, if we compare the service to the ideal clustering case, we see that Tesaurus is being able to cluster almost all the similar data lines that could be effectively uh, captured. On the right hand side, we see the uh, effect of Tesaurus on reducing the emiss rate. For the cache sensitive subset of the suite, MPKI is dropped by 1.28 times, which is also significantly higher than prior proposals. For further cost, area, and energy analysis, please also refer to the paper. So in summary, we demonstrate the caches have clusters of similar data lines. We propose the service which dynamically detects similar data lines via locality sensitive hashing and encode this incoming similar data line as a base cache and diffs. We showed how to efficiently implement all of this in hardware. And finally, we saw using our technique, we achieved 2.25 times compression on average across CPU, uh, spec CPU 2017 benchmark. If you have further questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to us and thank you for listening.